It's going to be big. This could be a World Series preview. But what do we have instead? We have a Yankee team that's two games out of the wild card, and um, ironically enough, they're in last place, tied with the uh, tied with the Red Sox. Although they're over five hundred, they are in last place. The Mets are seven games out of a wild card. Many, many teams to jump. The Yankees don't, yeah. only have one team to jump. The Mets have many teams to jump. Seven games out of a wild card, under five hundred, and what they're playing for now is two completely different things. I truly believe that the Yankees are making the playoffs. I do. Toronto doesn't scare me. I think the Yankees are better than Toronto. I do. And, I, and the Red Sox don't scare me. Tampa Bay, if they keep falling, maybe you could pass them. I think it would be really tough for the Yankees to, to take over the division and, and, and catch the Orioles. They have three games this weekend. If they sweep them, then the, the, the dialogue changes and the narrative changes. As for the Mets... I mean, we're looking at this almost as a referendum of what they're going to do. Are they going to sell? Uh, are they going to uh, try to acquire? Let, let's start with the Mets, Don, because I look at this and I go, what are they getting back if they sell anything? I mean, who who are the most desirable pieces that they could sell? Tommy Pham, who's a really good player, right? but he's not going to bring back a lot. He's not going to change your farm system. David Robertson, he's had a great year, 38 years old. He is not bringing back a package that will suddenly change the way people look at your farm system. Brooks Raley, another guy that you could trade, he's not bringing back any kind of uh, needle mover that you can say, oh, now the farm system jumps up the top five in the in the majors. No. Who on the team is that guy? You could say Pete Alonso. I think that would be a real gamble to trade Pete Alonso, and he's also having a terrible year. So you're kind of selling low. Jeff McNeil, another guy, a reasonable contract that he just signed on, but he's 60 points lower than he was last year. You'd be selling low. Brandon Nimmo, you're not trading. We we saw during the offseason. This center field market is non-existent. That's no. why they had to give him an eight-year deal. So there's nothing. I'm, I'm Mark no. Canna, another guy. But you, you tell me this, Don. What exactly are they dealing that's changing the way their farm system will be looked no. at? Now, Verlander tonight. I have it written down. In his last seven games, Don, his ERA is 2.25. In his last five, it's 1.80. So he's pitched well. Who's taking Justin Verlander at $43.5 million a year at the age of 40? The only way is if the Giant, if the, um, if the Mets ate a large percentage of that money. And that's what Cohen's supposed to be able to do, right? So I think you could get something for Verlander. But you'd have to eat a lot of that money. 40, you're talking about 40, how even the rest of this year is significant at $43 million. And then the $43 million after that, I mean, how much would you eat? I mean, make it worth even, it? Let, let's say you ate a lot, right? Are you, for a 40 year old pitcher who started off really slowly, are you getting back like farm system altering talent? I don't know. And also, here's the thing with um, even like Marte. The Giants, the, I keep saying the Giants because you're talking about Barkley. With the Mets, I, I don't think they'd go into a rebuild because you still have pieces where they would probably try to go after it next year, and you've got an owner with a lot of money. So you might want to keep Verlander just because you might want to have him at the top of your rotation next year. Right. you got to uh, think about next year. Yeah, so I don't know if you want to necessarily do that. I don't know if anybody wants Scherzer. He, he can't win a big game anymore. And he's no. also been ineffective at the end of the season, breaking down. Did last year. You know, did the last year in L.A. when they traded for him with a dead arm. So I don't think you're getting anything for Scherzer. Robertson, you'll get something for because he can close, he can set up. So I think there's something there. Um, yeah, maybe Adovino, maybe, uh, but not not a lot. Rayleigh, yeah, you'll get something back, but nothing. But do you to go want, let's say you make these trades, though, Don. Do you really want to limp over the last two months of the season into the offseason? I mean, they might be a 74-win team if they make all these deals. Here, here's what's so tempting, because I think they're done. All right, Because I, I just don't think they've played consistent enough for me able to believe. But I'm sure the Mets are looking at it. Are right, we got the Yankees. Let's say they win both of these games. Right. Not out of the realm of possibility, right? Nope. Then you got four games with the Nationals. And then you got three games in Kansas City against the Royals. So it does open the door. Let's say they sweep the series. Then you, you might be able to go on a little bit of a run here, and they're going to want to see that through. The unfortunate thing is that three-game series is in August, so you're already going to have to make that decision. So let's say they sweep the Yankees and the Nationals and win six in a row like they did, you know, look like they were on their way to doing to close out the first half of the season. 
Mm -hmm. he, he, then they may as well just ride it out, right? Since you're not getting a lot back in return and you want to have the building full and you want to see what can happen, I would think they probably would stay packed. Don, I, you know what? I, I got to tell First of all, also with, with Verlander, he has a very attainable $35 million option on top of next year as well. Mm -hmm. So good luck trading him. He'll be, thir he'll be 42 at that point. I don't right. think I would do anything. Yeah, I don't think you're going to do anything. I mean, also, because I know you always laugh at me. There's still a chance. Like, dumb and dumber. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah, they're just seven games out. There's too many teams to climb. I over. get it. I get it. But the te you tell me the teams in front of them that you say are exponentially better than them. They're not. Giants aren't that much better. No, the they're Giants just not. The Marlins right aren't now. better. The Giants have lost six in a row. Right, and, and, the, and the Marlins are, start are free falling. So that's two teams right there out of the way. Yeah, but you know what? But Miami and San Francisco are tied for the final wild card spot. So you guys, no, I, I get it. The Diamondbacks are so, starting to lose a lot. You know, you, you got a lot of teams to climb over, and they just haven't shown the consistency. I mentioned this on Sunday with you on the K Rodcast. Why should I believe? What have they done this year to make you believe that they're poised for nothing? A run? What, except what for exactly? returning to the mean. Fine, but if you all right, but let's say returning to the mean. All right. Well, Alonzo's having. You know, he's from a production standpoint, home runs RBIs, but, you know, is he all of a sudden going to be a better defender in the second half? He has not played well defensively at first base. Um, I think, you know, what's happening with Marte with these, with these migraines? You know, what can I expect from him? He was a major player for them last year. Take a look at the back of base, the baseball card of McNeil. It's every other year with him. All right, so maybe this is just like it was back in 2021. He'll have a nice year, not a great year. This guy might bat 100 points less than he did last year. Unbelievable. So if you go by the back of his baseball card, he's not going to turn it around until next year. Right, so I, I just I don't see it, but at the same time, when but you aren't look we at... Also, but aren't we also betting that with the Yankees that Rizzo's going to return to the mean and LeMay is going to return to the mean and, and Stanton's yeah, going to return to the mean? I understand, but you're getting judge back at some point. I, I, right, the, the news that they're even flirting with the possibility of this weekend tells me that you're going to have him back for August and September. Right. So the second best player in Major League Baseball is returning to your lineup for the final two months of the season. You don't have anybody to climb over. You're two point two games out of what well, you and the Red Sox, but you don't. You're tied with them. You're two games out of a playoff spot, despite how brutal that they have played. They're still just two games back without having to climb over a ton of teams. So even if even if Rizzo doesn't return, even if Lemayu doesn't return, isn't it possible the judge himself coming back can just be enough for you to be able to sneak in? Uh, I think the Yankees are getting in. I, I I said it to Dan. Dan thinks it was ridiculous. Why? I believe I believe this team's going to make the playoffs. Oh, I, I do, do too. Uh, I I I'm telling you. Maybe I'm I, a cockeyed I, optimist. I, I don't even doubt it. I don't I don't think they're making a run. Now they're going to look at it. But if they make go, the playoffs and you've got Cole and Rodon straightens himself out, why, yeah. why wouldn't they make a run? But just because I think they're going to burn this bullpen out to get to the playoffs, and I don't know what they're going to have left in the playoffs. You know, well, they're going to have Loisa get back. No, all right, but I just don't know if they're poised for a run. But hey, listen, they're gonna, they they have the right to think they do. Getting Judge back, and if Judge can hit, the problem with Judge though, Michael, is if these guys don't turn it around, are they going to even pitch to Judge? I wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I want so, to see him be pitched too, but I mean, we right. saw that in September of last year. Right. So if Rizzo is going to continue to struggle, not, listen, he went four for four with a home run against Kansas City. Good on him. It was against like literally the worst starting pitcher in baseball on Sunday. But maybe it does get him going. And I don't know what to expect from Lemayhew, but there's enough there to make you think that adding a judge and only having to make up two games. And I, and I've said it before, Mike. Uh, uh, Jeff Passan disagreed with me. I, I don't think the Blue Jays got the stomach for this. They never seem to. So if this becomes a race, Michael, I, as bad as the Yankees have been, I'm going to bet on them over the Blue Jays. I would agree. And I'm interested to see where this Ray thing goes. Like, it's are, are they, are they and, and the Rays like supposedly, a stone? They are, they are sniffing around seriously about Otani. But, again, I laugh when people say the, the Angels are going to, like, trade Otani. They're closer to the playoffs than they've ever been. In the last, like, five or six years, they're only four and a half games out. Why would they trade their best player? Who they don't want to trade, who they want to see win an MVP in, in their uniform. No. Well, why, why would Artie Moreno uh, okay it? It doesn't make sense. Well, if that's the case and they get Trout back at some point, I guess you the Yankees should be concerned about them. 
Of course. Now, what if Seattle ever figures it out? Now, they haven't figured it out. Now, under- Seattle won two come-from-behind games against the Blue Jays, which allowed the Yankees to pick up those games. So Seattle's breathing down their neck. It's going to be tight. It's it's going to be a lot of it, – that's why I kind of, you know, getting back to the conversation about, like, whether you're a true Yankee fan or not. And we took phone calls over the last, you know, all the times that you've been out. Oh, Don, it's a, it's a boring team to watch. I'm, I'm done with this team. All right, maybe they're not as exciting as, as they used to be, but isn't there excitement watching a team that's only two games out of a playoff spot to be actually in a race to make the playoffs? Well, I, isn't, that I, I something did, that, isn't that enough to entertain your audience? I, I did say I'm going to double down, so you know some people on Twitter want to throw hands. Uh, my point is this, everybody. I'm not looking to insult that You have every right to be upset with the, the way the Yankee season has gone. Every right. They're in last place. You have every right to be upset. I'm not telling you that you shouldn't be upset. But when I hear, when we get phone calls and I see on social media, I'm done with this team. Bye. You're not a fan. Because you don't give up on your team no matter how bad they are. You ride it. You suffer. Because it's not all you know, unicorns and rainbows when you're a fan. You're, it's not. Right. I'm sorry. Being a fan means do good and bad. It's like marriage. Sickness not, and health. You're not a fan. Go. But, if you don't like the, it, go. But here's what I don't understand. If we're talking about the Mets, all right, the Mets are under 500. The Mets have underachieved. Do I sit there and consume them the way I did last year? Oh well, no, because listen, they're, I think they're out of it. But if you, if Michael, if you were to call me at any moment, no matter where I am, what's the Mets score? I know. Oh, I'm, I'm checking the phone. I'm look. I'm listening when I'm in the car. I mean, it's still my team. It's part of the summer. The, the, the Mets are the soundtrack of my summer. I watch and I listen because I'm a fan of the team. I've been my entire life. But a Yankee fan, the games have meaning. You still can make the playoffs. Like So I don't understand why, why would you give up on them when they're only two out? Why, because you don't think they're going to win the World Series? That's it. So I guess you're just in love with the winning and not the actual team. But but my, my, my point is, if you look, uh, I, I don't understand somebody. Uh, I, I started loving the Yankees when they were terrible. What? Did I just give up on them because they lost? No, that's what drew me in. So oh. I could see you being upset by the way they're playing. But to say I'm checking out, I'm done with this team, then you're a fraud. Well, let's, 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 let's tell the dirty little secret, Michael, okay? And I don't know if you'll agree with this or not. There's a lot of Yankee fans, right? Tons mm-hmm. of them. And, you know, living in New York, they're probably the most popular team in New York, right? But how do we know those people that are Yankee fans, they don't get called frauds because they happen to live in New York? Like, maybe those people, they're Laker fans, or they're Cowboy fans, or they, they, they root for teams outside the market, but they don't get accused of that for baseball because they just happen to live in New York and love the Yankees for the same reason they would love all the out of, other out-of-town teams because they can't take the losing, so they hop on a bandwagon. Why do you think there are so many Cowboy fans and Raider fans and Dolphin fans? Well, wh- because for years the Giants and Jets were both awful, and people couldn't take the losing, so they started rooting for another team that was winning. So they, we can call them frauds when somebody says, I'm a Cowboy fan and I, and I live in Glen Rock, New Jersey. But you don't accuse them of that when they're a Yankee fan because they happen to live in the area. But are they rooting for the team this, well, for the same reason? You, you, you bring up a point that I could connect to another point. So all these big mouths that say, I'm done with this team, I'm not watching anymore, again, bye. No, you're not going to be missed. All I know is this, Don. The Yankees just played the Kansas City Royals, mm-hmm. right? They're on pace to lose 118 games and challenge the 62 Mets for ineptitude. They are not a good team. They're not a good team to watch. There's no star on that team. The closest thing is Bobby Witt Jr. and Salvador Perez. They're awful. They had a sellout on Friday. Now, you can say, well, they had the sellout because it was Nestor Cortez bobblehead. Oh, okay, let's play along. They had a sellout because of Nestor Cortez bobblehead. This, by the way, they only give out 18,000 bobbleheads. So that means that 28,000 people were there just to see the game. Then on Saturday, not giving away anything but a game, 44,000. Mm-hmm. Then on Sunday, not giving away anything but the game, 44,000. So, again, the people that are saying that, you're all frauds. You're not real fans well, anyway. Because if they could get over 130,000 people to see the Kansas City Royals after they had just lost four in a row on an absolutely demoralizing, demoralizing road trip, I think more Yankee fans are hanging in there than the people that said, well, I'm done with them. Okay, you're done with them? Bye. 
Well, I guess what I what I would counter because I brought up like would would there be less people against Kansas City because they came back from the miserable road trip and then you know talking it out I realized nobody walks up there's no ticket window anymore people buy tickets in advance so I'm sure there's a lot of people that bought these tickets months ago they're not going to eat the ticket they're going to go <laughs> the effects if the Yankees miss the playoffs Michael I think it would affect attendance next year. Because maybe people wouldn't be so anxious unless yeah, they went you know out and what? got an Otani. Let's say they miss the playoffs and they'll go out and get Otani as a free well, agent. Yeah, that's a difference. But I'm just saying, if the team was legitimately bad, we saw it, Michael. All those Don Mattingly grand slams in the upper deck, there's nobody there. We, we, there has been times where the Yankee people didn't go to Yankee games. Right? That's changed when you play 30 years of consistent winning baseball. That's going to change. But there, at some point, it may affect the attendance, but probably not in real time because these tickets were bought way in advance. Donald, though, you know what? You know what's a true indicator, though? Television ratings. The yes ratings are essentially what they were last year. A little bit lower because you don't have Judge chasing Roger Maris, but the ratings are excellent. So that's not buying yeah. tickets. Hey. So again, the people that screen the loudest probably are the the minority, and we pay attention to the minority. But you, you're not real. You're but, not real fan. Real fans show up to see a baseball team, see, whether whether they're good or bad or they're underachieving. They're still your team. See, I'm not going to apologize for that. All we can do is feel the calls we take. Right. And the inordinate amount of 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 negativity we get from this team is maybe it's the minority of the fan base, but it is the majority of the callers. So, yeah, because people that are upset will wait on hold for 40 minutes. People that are happy won't. They'll just, just listen. But I just wish we can just... Can we just forget about the Yankees' past and forget about George Steinbrenner and forget about four championships in five years? Can we just live in the real time of a baseball team that's got a chance to make the playoffs? All right? Stop grading it on the curve of their history. Things have changed now. All right? And when I bring that up and I say, well, look look at the Mets, their season is over, well, we're the Yankees. All right, well, you're not the Yankees anymore. You're just like everybody else. But at least you're in a position where you can still make the playoffs and still technically win a championship. The Phillies went to the World Series last year. So it's not impossible. I wouldn't bet on it, but it's not impossible. So why can't we live in real time? Derek Jeter and Jorge Posada and Bernie Williams and Paul O'Neill and Andy Pettit aren't coming out of that dugout. This is what they have. Well, and Andy it might not tonight. be as good as you want it to be, but it still could actually be good enough to make the playoffs. Andy is tonight. He's thrown out the first pitch. And Paul's on the air with me. And so is but, Dave. But they're not going to be able to contribute. No, you're right. Maybe Andy not. to a little extent because he's going to be advising them. I would advise Andy to tell Aaron to keep his starting pitchers in longer. Ooh. I don't know if he'll have that kind of power. Hey, do you really want to take shots the rest of your life just to no. lose weight? And